Hi, this is Andrew. Thanks for joining me. This is episode two of the Active Directory series. In episode one, we installed Active Directory on uh, our Windows 2019 server, which is right here. Um, what we're going to do today is actually add a computer to the domain. So I have a Windows 10 server, uh, Windows 10 computer right here. We're going to go through the process of joining it to the domain and then some uh, computer specific things that we're going to do on that system. So first thing we're going to do, uh, let me go through my list. Uh, we have the domain controller running. You can see it is test.local. Um, we are going to change the networking on this computer. So I need to go here. Uh, if I try to join it to the network without pointing it, join it to the domain without pointing it to the right DNS server, it's not going to be able to find the domain. It needs DNS in order to do that. That's one of the piece, critical pieces. So I'm going to go into adapter options. Again, multiple ways to do a lot of these things in Windows. Uh, some of my ways are just based on dated ways from doing it for a long time. But I'm going to go into IPv4. I'm going to set the IP address of this system to 172.16.123.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
two minutes maybe. And now I'm going to go in. I could log in with the local account again. This is the local administrator account. I have to be careful here because if I log in with a local account, I don't have any permissions to do anything on the domain. I would need to then log in separately. What I want to actually do and what I want to show is logging in on the domain. Now, uh, in the previous video, I created an extra account in called Fred. If I try to log in with Fred on a normal computer, it would work. Because I'm using remote desktop connection, because that is what I have in my AWS environment, I don't have a console connection where I can simulate logging in on a keyboard and mouse and monitor. Uh, I have to do the remote connection. That means I have to use my administrator account first, and I will show you why in just a second. So I do test administrator. And then I'm going to use my, again, domain administrator password. This will get me logged in. OK, so that took, uh, I would guess, two or three minutes, a little bit longer than normal, because it was the first time that that domain administrator account logged into the computer. Couple of things to look at here. So if I go to File Explorer, uh, and I look at profiles on this computer, I will see that I have both the original administrator account and now I have an account called administrator.test. It wouldn't be called, the only reason to call it .test is because that administrator profile already existed, but now I'm in administrator.test. So I'm gonna go here and do Windows PowerShell. I could have just as easily done command prompt and now I'm at a command prompt in PowerShell. I'm going to use the command, who am I? And that says I am test, which is the domain, backslash administrator. So that's showing, also showing my profile as administrator.test. That's not a perfect uh, uh, test of where I am. This one is. This shows test administrator. So that is how I'm logged in. Now, the next thing I want to do is actually... Um, I'm going to do computer management. So I right click on the start menu, select computer management. I want to be able to log in with other accounts. So I'm going to go to the local groups on the system. One of those local groups is remote desktop users. So I'm going to open that up. And if you look at it, there are a couple of accounts here. Uh, and by default, uh, members of the administrator group are allowed to log in to remote desktop users. I'm going to add a different group. and it's saying from this location, test.local. I'm going to type domain and do check names. That's going to give me all of the, the group names that start with domain. The one I'm looking for is domain users. I could have typed domain users, uh, domain space users, exactly like that, and that would have worked as well. In this case, I just went about it. Um, I typed domain just to ensure that I had the proper uh, spacing on that. Um, if I wanted to say some other group is allowed to log in, I could have done that as well. Now, if you remember from, like I said, if you remember from the previous video, I, in users, created an account called Fred. And Fred is just a regular user. Fred is not an administrator. Fred is a member of domain users. So Fred should be able to log in with this account. I'm going to uh, go here. Uh, I will sign out of the administrator account. Since it's a remote desktop, it just kills the remote desktop session. Now I'll go in and reconnect to a new remote desktop session, except instead of using administrator, I'm going to use a different account. Still, domain is listed as test. I could change that if I needed to, if I needed to log in locally. Uh, I could do dot backslash, and then it will point to the computer account. I don't want to do that. I want to log in with the Fred account. And since I use the same password that I use everywhere, I remember the password and um, I can log into it. When I say everywhere, I mean everywhere in this test environment. So I'm going to let this spin and we'll come back in a minute. OK, so now I am logged in as Fred. And if we want to confirm that, I can, again, go to PowerShell and who am I? And you see it is Fred in the test domain. It is this account right here. And again, uh, it now it's showing Fred as my profile. So that's all set there. 
Now let's look at a little bit more about what Active Directory can do. You see all of these uh, icons that have two people listed. Those are the groups, and we already saw the, the group domain users uh, we used, and that has right now just Fred in it. Um, administrator is also a member of domain users, but administrator is a member of administrators and domain administrators as well. So let's say I needed another group. I could right click here and say new and group. And now I have a group called sales. Now um, I have the sales group and let's say I want Fred to be part of the sales group. I can go in here and say members and add Fred. And now we have Fred listed there. Um, that's all I want there. But the other thing I do want is I want to create a new user that is not in the sales group. So I'm going to create a bill account. Bill and then I will go next and I'm going to uncheck user must change password. I kind of mentioned this in the previous video. It's really important that you uncheck this uh, this checkbox because the first time that that is prompting for a password change and that doesn't work through a remote desktop. So if I try to log in as an account that it has this pa user must change password at next login, it will fail on the login. So cyber class 21. And now I have the bill account created. Now, if I tried to log in as Bill, that wouldn't that would work because Bill is part of domain users. But if I go back here and to computer management, now I am Fred on this computer, and Fred doesn't have permissions uh, to do anything special on the computer. So if I go in here and try to change the group membership of, say, remote desktop users, it will give me an error. I will remove and select OK, and it says you are access is denied so i can go in here and see who's a member but i can't change that one thing i can do is um if i can get to windows administrative tools and computer management i can right click and more one of the options is run as administrator this is going to prompt me for an administrator account to run this this program as. So even though I'm logged into Fred as Fred, I'm going to actually run this account as administrator or run this program as administrator. And you see now I'm running this account, this program, and you can't even really tell the difference, uh, obviously, but if I go into groups and remote desktop users, I can remove and I'll apply that and it accepted the change. Now I'm gonna go in and add sales and check names and now I have the sales group in here. So um, sales can log in here, but no one else can, aside from administrators. So I will close everything down, log out, and what I'm going to try to do is log in as Bill. And what we will see is that is going to fail. So I go back to 131 is the Windows system. I'm going to do more choices, use a different account, and do Bill. And I'm still in logging into domain test. That is the same thing as test backslash bill, you see nothing changes there. That's just the most recent one, or in some cases, the, the domain that's set as the default on the computer. So I try to log in. And once again, about two minutes later, uh, we get the error message saying, this connect the connection was denied because the user account is not authorized for remote login. That is the bill account. Now let's try to fix that. Let's say, okay, Bill is a member of the sales. I, we forgot to add him. So that should, he should be able to log in. So I can do sales, check names, he's in sales. And I will try the same thing again, 131. And more choices, I will use a different account. I'll do Bill and my password. 
And it was a lot less than two minutes this time. It was about 30 seconds. And it is logging in to the Bill account because Bill is a member of sales, which is al allowed to log in. Um, one more thing we'll take a look at. Let's say Fred is no longer a member of sales while that's going. And uh, so we remove Fred from sales. He's only a member of domain users. Now I will log out as from the bill account and try to log in as Fred. And as we saw just a minute ago, that worked fine. We were able to get in as Fred. Now I'm going to try to get in as Fred after he's been removed from the sales group. So Fred, once again, domain is still test. And I will try to log in. Uh, we should see that message pop up in a minute. While this is spinning, just think about what's happening. We are changing the groups that the, that these accounts are a member of, and that's allowing us to log in or not log in. There's a message saying the connection was denied because it's no longer, it is not authorized for remote login. So this is something to kind of repeat and, and make sure you fully understand that um, being a member of this group is what gave me permissions to do this thing. This is how I logged into the computer. The computer accepts the information from this domain controller because it is a member of the domain. And that's something we saw over here, that it's a member of the domain. And in a large domain, you can have thousands or tens of thousands of computers in this uh, one container. So in our case, we just have two, one, account, one computer and two users, uh, Fred and... Bill is down at the bottom. If we refresh the list, it'll reorder everything. We also have a sales group. And the member right now is only Bill. We could certainly add Fred to that. We could also create a, um, a sub sales team and or um, some other groups that this group is a member of. So we can have groups and subgroups that can be nested together. Um, one more thing I just want to show you, we could and this is something we'll get to later on, we can create something called an organizational unit. So um, from, actually it needs to be from here, we can't create an organizational unit in a built-in container. So we go here, we go new, and we go to organizational unit. And this could be, let's say we needed a sales organizational unit. It's not a sales group, but this is a place where we can store things. We could go to computers and say, this is a sales computer, so we want to put it here. And by doing that now, that doesn't exist in computers anymore. That exists here. And we could say that Fred is a member of both the sales group, which gives him permissions. And we could also say he's a member, he is in the sales container. So any policies that are applied to the sales container and we'll get to policies later on. Any policies that are applied will apply to Fred if they're user policies or to the that computer if it's a computer policy. So this is a little bit more of the basics of Active Directory. And if it seems overly complicated, it you know really just do one step at a time, repeat it, and try to understand what's happening at each step. So that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.